So now what I want to do is look at these same Oracle algorithms and look at how they would be if we did them mathematically, because especially the second one was a nightmare, right? We were going through all of these states with the visual representation, and we want to see at what point does, does the mathematical representation become easier for us. And then the other thing is, of course, computers don't care how big the matrices are. So the matrix based calculations are definitely going to be easier for the computer. Um, all right, so let's let's do the first one, the Bernstein Vazirani. So just to remind you, so if the, the 0, 1, 1 is the three bit guess, that means that there are C knots connected to the second and third. And so depending on how many black balls are in the second or third, if there's only one of them, that means it'll flip the input. Uh, and then if there are two of them, the input will stay the same. So, um, so what I want to do is look at what's inside the bernstein vazirani oracle and then what's outside it. So inside, inside the bernstein vazirani oracle, um, we know that there are two C0 gates if the secret code is 0, 1, 1, right? It depends on the secret code. Uh, and so we need to separately calculate the matrices for the first one and the second one because this cannot be done in parallel. So that means um, that for the first one, that means I have the identity on the first bit, but then I have an identity on a bit that's between the two inputs for the C0. And so we don't really know how to do that. And so whenever you're constructing a matrix that can't use the tensor multiplication, then you need to fall back on, I have a set of inputs and I need to figure out what would be the output for each set of inputs or each, each input. So we have these eight combinations and we know that the middle one never changes. So the middle bit of all of these eight combinations is not going to change. And the left hand bit is the control bit. So I know right away that if the, if the control bit is zero, then the control and target don't change. So these four don't change. Um, and then we know that if the control is one, then the target toggles. So that means that these four last ones the target is going to toggle. So the third bit is going to toggle. All right, so now what I want to do is take this truth table and transfer it and make it a matrix. Okay. And so the top four, so each of the inputs is a row of the matrix. Okay. And so what I note is that the top four don't change. That means the top four must match an identity matrix. That means the ones go down the diagonal. The ones always go down the diagonal of an identity matrix. So basically what we do is we put a one, the, the row is the input and the column is the output. And we put a one at every coordinate of the row and column, the input and output. So at zero, zero, at one, one, at two, two, and at three, three, okay? Now for the last four, they're, they did have changes, so it's not going to be down the diagonal. So in row four, I put a one in position five. And in row five, I put a one in position four. In row six, I put a one in position seven. And in row seven, I put a one in position six. So this, uh, so this is how we, you know, take a set of inputs and outputs and and translate that to the matrices. And this works um, for anything that's not making something, you know, putting something into superposition and is, uh, is going from pure state to pure state. Um, why do you, how do you know that everything else is zeros and how do you know what the size of the, that the matrix is eight by yeah. eight? Yeah, great. So because it's three bits, there are two to the eight combinations. So it's an eight by eight matrix. Okay. And, and this is, you put a one in, and because it's a going from pure state to pure state, that means that one input is mapped to a, another state output. So that's why there's a single one in each row, there's a single one and all zeros for the rest, because you're just swapping, you're swapping um, whites for blacks or blacks for whites, you're not changing the amount of superposition. If we change the amount of superposition, uh, then we would have uh, potentially fractional values. 
or we would have the fraction on the outside and have multiple ones. And we would also have to have negative signs. Um, so it's just because it's going from pure states to pure states that we can do this. All right, so now we have to, to multiply. So we have the, the matrix for the three bits and we need to add that first bit on, which is identity. And so we follow the tensor product for matrices and I've, I've put in here, oh, these red boxes correspond to the ones in the identity. So in those ones, we put the matrix we just calculated and in the spots without red boxes, we put all zeros because that's the calculation for the tensor product. So when you're doing um, tensor products, it's really not useful to calculate each individual spot. Well, it's useful, but it takes a long time. Uh, it's a lot easier to copy over your entire matrix to that quadrant that's a one, or the entire, you know, the entire zero matrix to that quadrant that's a zero. Okay. So any questions on how I got from the, uh, how I got any, any part of this calculation? This is our final matrix for our four bit operation to just do that first C naught operation. Okay. And so it is 16 by 16 because four qubits have two to the fourth combinations of uh, choices of outputs. All right, so now we have the second one and the second one is actually easier because the two identities are next to each other and the C naught uh, is of adjacent qubits. So we can just use identity, identity, C naught, okay? So we have our identity matrices and then we have our C naught matrix that we can look up. Um, and, and so we, we just straight do these calculations. So um, we, can, we can combine the identity matrices first if we want. And so then we've got the ones just going down the diagonal and then we can, we can multiply this out. So uh, once again, we've got our, uh, we've got our ones going the, down the diagonal and then everything else is gonna be zeros. So I'm gonna copy the right-hand matrix into each spot uh, in the diagonal and then I fill the rest of the matrix with zeros. So those two matrices, we calculated two matrices. And so you would apply one matrix first, and then you would apply the second matrix. Um, and then we have to do all of the stuff around it. So we know that we have four H gates on the left and four H gates on the right. So we need to calculate what four H gates looks like. We know, we already know from, uh, from Kate's presentation. So we have the four H gates. And when you multiply two of them together, you get this matrix right here um, with the ones and negative ones. So we saw that before. And then I can do this calculation again between this H gate and the four by four H gate. And I recognize that the bottom right quadrant is going to be negated, whereas this will be copied for the top right, the, the three spots. So I copy it into the three spots. And then the fourth one, I have to negate everything. So now we need to do this big thing. So we also, we again recognize that we're gonna copy that in and three of them are, gonna, are going to be identical to the one we just, that giant thing we just had, and one of them is gonna be all negated. So, um, so, and I'm actually putting a red box around uh, the one that's negated. So I do these three, those are negated. And then I have to negate this whole thing, which is interesting because then that means that these three end up negated, right? And that one is now, it's been negated twice. So now it's back to the original. And what you can notice from this is that the position of these red boxes matches the position of negatives in this small quadrant, right? So that's what would have happened if we had, uh, if we had gone from two eight by eight matrices and multiplied those together, we would have done positive, 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 negative, positive, negative. So just to show that it, it gets the same result. So we, we did this. And then if I were to actually go through the set of inputs, 
I would have to calculate all this up, out, right? This once, and then the, the first C naught we figured out, and then the second C naught we figured out, and then this again to get our output. And so uh, personally, I think that the visual representation was a lot easier for me to go through if I'm trying to calculate the result. Um, the intuitive approach is significant easier, significantly easier for me, be, partly because it was a particular input and I knew how the gates operated on the types of inputs and I didn't have to make this giant matrix every time. Okay. So, so in summary, you can use the tensor product to calculate algorithms. Um, but sometimes you have to sketch out those inputs and outputs and the times you have to do that are when uh, the two bit gate spans gates right and and there are some bits that aren't going into it. And, uh, and hopefully this also showed you how powerful the visual representation is for small number of qubits uh, and how quickly like this was an old, this was only a four qubit operation. And so with a four qubit operation, we're already at 16 by 16 matrices, which are 256 spots. Uh, and so you can imagine how quickly uh, using classical computers to simulate quantum operations can be intractable. In fact, impossible. We don't have big enough computers to simulate quantum operations at, when does it tap out? Like 150 qubits, something like that? 200 yeah. qubits? It's, it's pretty small, actually. I think it's like in the, um, the Google experiments where they're doing their randomized benchmarking, it was like, it was like the, it was like 52, 53 qubits when they couldn't like, yeah, they yeah, can't like they simulate, couldn't, like, simulate the, the circuits. Right. So, so that means that that's why quantum is amazing is that if we can figure out ways for it to be useful, which we have, and if we can create the machine, the physical machines that are big enough to run these, uh, then we can do things that classical computers can't do because it just takes too much state uh, to do this for classical computers.